So welcome to this video on machine learning. Um, so what we'll do today is uh, continue uh, looking at some classification problems. And uh, this follows our last video on logistic regression. Um, so what we did last time was look at um, that example of supervised classification. Um, and uh, in particular, we applied that to a diabetes data set trying to predict the outcomes um, for a diabetes study based on some input variables. Um, what we used in that um, case was a loss function that was based on entropy, information entropy. In particular, we used this cross entropy loss. Um, so what we'll do today is do something similar, um, a classification problem. In this case, it will be applied to iris flowers. Um, so let's start with the um, preamble and let's look at the problem in general. So first, um, what we want to do is, is classify iris flowers using two different uh, machine learning techniques. And so this will complement this logistic regression that we covered before. Um, and we'll use, we'll use um, a, a data set that contains these three iris types, iris citosa here on the left, iris versicolor in the middle, and iris virginica um, on, the, on the right here. Um, so as you can see, these are, I guess, slightly different um, irises. Uh, so um, what we're trying to do is classify those based on input features, which are the length and the width of the petals and the sepals. The sepals are also a part of the flower. Um, I'm not a biologist, so I'm not an expert and can't claim to explain um, where those are. Um, notice that um, we're not trying to classify these irises based on the images, so we're not doing the kind of uh, uh, machine learning where we feed it an image and ask it to uh, to tell it what uh, what what image uh, what the image is of that is going to be for a later um, later part of the course if we get to that at all so um, we can look at the input features um, and we'll use Seaborn the package that I introduced last time um, to make a pair plot um, that's a, a grid of correlation plots coded by the classification um, since Seaborn includes this iris data set, um, this is particularly easy. Um, so we can give it this pair plot, um, plot the iris data set, um, and it will give us a set of uh, correlation plots. And as you can see, um, we have our four input features, pedal width, pedal length, sepal width, and sepal length. And then again here on the horizontal axis, sepal length, sepal width, pedal length, and pedal width. And we have a color coding for the, four, for the three different species of iris, irises. Um, on the diagonal, we have the histograms for the individual feature. So one thing is immediately obvious. If you were to um, uh, want to classify these irises by hand, um, how would you do that? Well, you would look at where you see the most separation. So iris setosa here in pedal length is clearly separate from the other two. Um, it's not as pronounced in the shape of the sepals. Um, in, in the petal width, it's fairly pronounced again. Um, iris setosa is separate from iris versicolor and virginica. Um, but it becomes more difficult to separate um, iris versicolor and, and virginica. We might say, well, if we put a cut here at the petal width at 1.5, or if we put a cut here at the pedal with a, maybe 1.6, um, then we will separate most of the virginica from the versicolor after we've already separated out um, the setosa based on, for example, um, the pedal length here. So that's our traditional approach to classification. It's by hand and it's specific to this data set, it's specific to the problem that we're looking at. Um, if we have additional variables that become available, it's difficult um, to extend that into the existing um, classification scheme. So uh, in particular, in this case, if we use the algorithm that I just outlined based on pedal length and pedal width, uh, we don't use any of those sepal sizes at all. Um, presumably, if we have that information, it can only help us in making a more accurate classification, right? Um, also, if we add an additional measurement, if we add additional data, if we have more training data, it becomes difficult to incorporate that in a consistent or in a, a systematic way into our, um, into our cutoff values. 
So what we'll do now is um, use two algorithms, k nearest neighbor um, and decision trees to um, make these processes uh, more systematic and automate them. K nearest neighbors will be the most general approach. That's K and N. Uh, I don't know why it actually um, sometimes renders that incorrectly. Um, so, and decision trees will actually take this traditional approach and make it um, uh, and, and automate it and make it a systematic approach. Before we get started, though, um, think for a moment how you might have problems in your um, research or in your major that are similar to this. Uh, I'm sure there, there's some that you can think of. Um, maybe it's in, in uh, identification of, of um, particles in a detector, which is closest to the work that I am doing. Um, maybe it is a diagnosis of an illness in patients based on, um, on some certain measured quantities, like again, blood pressure, body mass index and such. Um, so think of some of those um, examples. And note that in this case, we actually only have 150 entries, about 50 for each species. Um, and uh, so you don't need um, thousands of entries to be able to start taking advantage of this.